Jim Harbaugh has just signed a five-year deal to be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers in a move that I believe is great for both sides. You see, the Los Angeles Chargers are coming off of a very disappointing 2023 campaign where they finished dead last in the AFC West with a record of 5-12. and 12. Now, it was a big part of all of those losses, you know, the absence of Justin Herbert towards the end of the year. Possibly, I mean, the Los Angeles Chargers did not win a single game when Justin Herbert was not in the lineup. However, even when he was playing, the team went 5-8 and eight in the games that Justin Herbert started. So this season was looking like a complete failure, even if Justin Herbert had stayed healthy. Now, the reason there was a vacancy at the head coaching position was because in week 15 of the NFL season, the Los Angeles Chargers, in a not-so-shocking move, decided to part ways with Brandon Staley, the man who had been the head coach of the Chargers for the past three seasons. Why after week 15? Because versus the Las Vegas Raiders, divisional rivals, they got blown out 63-21. to Hell, this Raiders team had made a very similar move a couple weeks prior when they decided to fire their head coach, Josh McDaniel. And their team seemed to turn things around when they made their decision. However, I do think Brandon Staley was done a bit dirty here because he had Easton Stick as the quarterback. Justin Herbert had just gotten hurt the week prior, so he didn't have him to go up against the Las Vegas Raiders. That was partially one of the big reasons they got blown out, but also he was a former defensive coordinator. So getting blown out by 41 points is absolutely ridiculous. Hell, if we take a look at Brandon Staley's credentials, he doesn't really have much of anything to show for. You know, before he was hired as the Los Angeles Chargers head coach, he had been the defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams for about one season. And before that, he was the outside linebackers coach for the Broncos for one year and the Chicago Bears for two. So the fact that he just made the leap to head coaching at that time was ridiculous. I don't even know why the Chargers decided to hire him, but that's all in the past now, okay? I mean, in Brandon Staley's tenure with the Chargers, they ended up going, what, 9-8 and eight the first season, barely missing the playoffs. Then last season, they actually went 10-7, and seven, a bit of an improvement, before getting absolutely embarrassed in the wild card round. That game was so bad that I have made, what, three videos on it at this point. It's absolutely insane what happened to the Chargers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars in the playoffs, where they basically had a huge lead going into the half and then just kind of fell apart towards the end of the game. Yeah, their offense wasn't able to produce anything. You could blame their offensive coordinator. That's what the Chargers did. That's why they brought in Kellen Moore this season because they believed that they needed someone to mix it up on the offensive side of things. New head coaches love to bring in their own staff. So the old guard gets fired and replaced. It happens all the time, especially in the NFL world. And I cannot wait to see who Jim Harbaugh brings along with him to LA. Now, if we take a look at the Chargers and the team that Jim Harbaugh is essentially inheriting, they've got a ton of talent on this roster. We take a look at the offensive side of the ball. Well, they have Justin Herbert going into his fifth year. He is only 25 years old. He's got a ton of years in front of him. And since entering the league in 2020, he's looked like one of the best quarterbacks. Hell, in 2021, I would say he had his best season where the team went 9-8. and eight. It was his first year under Brandon Staley. He threw for 5,000 passing yards and 38 touchdowns. He looked phenomenal in 2021. Hopefully, now that Jim Harbaugh is here and Kellen Moore is staying as the offensive coordinator, Justin Herbert will be able to, you know, go back to that 2021 status, right? But he hasn't looked terrible in any of the seasons he's played so far. I mean, this was the first season he's ever really had to deal with any significant injury, so it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back. And I haven't even mentioned any of the absolute weapons Justin Herbert has at his disposal. Where do I even start? I mean, we could take a look at Keenan Allen, who has had one of the better seasons in his recent career, as 2023 was in real upswing for him, not only in games played, but in how he played them. He went out and got 
1,200 receiving yards. Sure, the team might not have looked the greatest, but you know, Keenan Allen did a little bit. In his entire 11-year career, he spent it with the Los Angeles Chargers, and he went out, got seven touchdowns this season. Hell, he's been with the Chargers so long, they were able to put a two-hour compilation of every single touchdown he's ever caught. It was absolutely crazy. Watch the whole thing. Keenan Allen highlights are amazing. So Jim Harbaugh has got a few weapons to work with. I haven't even gotten to their running back. Austin Eckler, one of the best in the league. Sure, he had to deal with injuries early on in the season, but he ended up playing 14 games for the team. Now, did he look his best in those 14 games? Maybe not, okay? He did only get 600 rushing yards, five touchdowns on the ground. He didn't look like the Austin Eckler from previous seasons, especially 2022. I'd say 2022 was Austin Eckler's best season as a Charger, where he went out and played 17 games for the team, 900 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns on the ground. He was an absolute weapon that the Chargers utilized to the max. So maybe that's why Austin Eckler had a bit of an injury coming into 2023. But you know what? In 2024, is looking to be completely healthy. He's under contract, so you should expect him to be there. And then we've got the defense, where there's talent left and right on this roster. You know, you take a look at the defensive backs. You got a few studs out there. Derwin James and then Asante Samuels Jr. Both who had some really good seasons, played a majority of the year, looked fantastic, held it down for the Chargers on the back end, and then at linebacker, you've got some of the best talent in the NFL. I'd say the defense is currently being led by Khalil Mack. He went out, got 17 sacks in 17 games, something I don't believe is being talked about enough. And then, you know, the other linebacker, Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa had six and a half sacks, you know, 20 combined tackles, 14 solo tackles, could have been a little more, but he had only played in nine games that season. He had been dealing with injuries for most of the year. But enough about all this talent on the roster, because with all of these skilled players comes a price, and the Chargers are looking to head into salary cap hell. Yeah, they've got no more money to spend. Jim Harbaugh is a bit screwed there. The only way they're going to remain contenders is if they're able to draft really well. So that'll probably be what Jim Harbaugh's tenure is based off of. What he does with this team. Because he could blow it up, you know, free up cap space and start all over with Justin Herbert. Or he could ride it out with this team if he believes the roster is good enough to win a Super Bowl. I'm just excited to see what Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers future looks like heading into 2024 and beyond. All right, that's about it for this video. Catch y'all later. Much love. Deuces.